Well, well, well. Guess who's back again? It's your boy, Jay, host of Ball Boy Talk. And if you haven't listened to it yet, the Young Dad Podcast as well. I have not been with you guys, released an episode, talked on this platform since 2021. However, during all of 2022, I did, however, still post on the blog at ballboyblog.com, which is now ballboymedia.com as well. You can get to the same search link and the same platform that way as well. Since the last episode 27, which is absolutely crazy to think that it was that long ago, a lot has happened. I have almost graduated college. I have launched the Young Dad Pod. Ball Boy Media LLC is now a thing. I did a whole season of beat writing for the Tri-City Dust Devils, high A affiliate of the Los Angeles Angels. What else happened? Man, so much happened. Kids grew. I grew. Um, man, it was just a wild and crazy year. Divorce. All these things have happened since Ball Boy Talk kind of went down. Um yeah, it kind of went down at the same time as everything happened about two years ago. Yeah, wow, crazy. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. Definitely check us out. We are everywhere on every single podcasting platform you can want. No matter what country you're in, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Amazon Music Podcasts, iHeartRadio Podcasts, CastBox, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Stitcher, as well as Anchor and Spotify as well. Man, this is exciting to be back here. I'm super excited. It's Super Bowl Sunday. And let me just tell you a little bit about Ball Boy Talk and what is going to be going forward. We are not just going to be baseball only. Baseball is so very niche. And we want to be more than just a niche. We want to be a sports talk show. So we're going to give unhinged opinions on all your favorite sports, all the sports headlines out there that we can think of that we want to react to, that we want to have an unhinged opinion toward. And we're going to go from there. Today, with it being Super Bowl Sunday, we're just going to jump in, talk about the Super Bowl a little bit. We have the Eagles-Chiefs scripted game, of course, um, coming out. And it's going to be a great game. I mean, you have two great teams. You have Patrick Mahomes, you know, five years in a row, has now been to the AFC Championship since becoming a starter. Lost Tyreek is in the Super Bowl. You know, the Philadelphia Eagles load it up, and they're in the Super Bowl. And Jalen Hurts has overcome every single critic that said, oh, he shouldn't be a starter, shouldn't be a starter, shouldn't be a starter. You know, he's going to fill out. He's proved everyone wrong, everyone in the organization wrong, and it's been incredible. And I loved every second of it. I've always been a big Jalen Hurts fan, and I think he's only gotten better year over year. Patrick Mahomes, baby goat. I mean, you have Travis Kelsey as your best weapon. Juju and all these other guys is kind of all over the place and it's exciting this is going to be a great game it's going to be the Andy Reid Bowl you know he took the Eagles to the Super Bowl now he's taking the Kansas City Chiefs playing against the Eagles Uh, another great narrative there I'm happy to see Andy Reid back in the Super Bowl he's such a great coach just phenomenal Uh, Philadelphia Eagles Nick Sirianni and crew Jalen Hurts just that offense adding A.J. Brown helped him get over the hump I mean, that's just kind of how the NFL is now. You need a true number one and then complementary pieces around them to be able to succeed offensively. And the Eagles did that. Well worth it. And now they're here. It's going to be a great game. It's just going to be a phenomenal game. We have Rihanna performing the halftime show, which, I mean, the ch- I'm talking to my dad about this. Chances of a nip slip are high, but it's awesome. It's Rihanna. She's a fantastic musical artist. I'm very excited for her. If I had to pick who it's going to be coming out for this game, man, it's hard because the Eagles just have a loaded team, great defense. There's a really good defense that's playing at a high level on the Kansas City side as well. Uh, This game honestly comes down to whatever happens in the fourth quarter during that two-minute drill. Uh, Whoever has the ball at the end, if if the ball is in Mahomes' hands and they're down, it's Kansas City Chiefs pulling this one out no matter what in that situation. So I think it's going to be a situational football game. I don't think this is going to be a blowout whatsoever. And 
I'm excited for um, kind of whatever whatever happens here, however, hap- however it happens. And yeah, that's what I got for the Super Bowl. I am personally rooting for the Eagles. I have a Philadelphia Philly shirt on because I don't own any Eagles merch because I'm a diehard Seahawks fan. And if you're a diehard football fan, you root for your single team. and That's about it. And you own their gear only. However, I am a baseball content creator. I own all 28 teams, different merchandise. The only two I do not own, one team is in the AL West with my Seattle Mariners, and then the other team is in the AL East, and that this team beat my Seattle Mariners back in 01 during the Divisional Series. So I'll let you guys take a wild guess at who those two teams are and get back to me there. I'm going to take a quick, quick break here. Again, this is going to be an ad-free show. We're not going to do any ads. I'm just going to take some quick water jump right back on with you here and talk a little bit about the NBA trade deadline as well. Now, for the NBA trade trade deadline, it was it's a wild speculation for about a month prior to the trade deadline. It started with why the Suns haven't traded for Jay Crowder. That was the very first kind of headline that got things started why they hadn't traded for Jay Crowder yet and what they were doing. Then things started to pick up a little bit on January 5th where the Celtics traded uh, Noah Vonley and Cash to the Spurs. That's pretty much all they got. Uh, I think they may have gotten a pick out of that. And then the Toronto Raptors started getting some buzz that they're going to be major players. And then we had everything start to happen on January 21st, about two weeks prior, saying, what are the Mavericks going to do? Are they going to get Lucas some help? Which we'll get to in a second. And then the Timberwolves started shopping D'Angelo Russell. Unsure about his future. What are they going to do? He was a free agent after the season. And then the Hawks were rumored to be looking to trade John Collins, which was crazy. And then on top of that, the Wizards forward Rao Hachimura kind of saying he wants to be somewhere that wants me as a basketball player. And I want to be somewhere that likes my game. Basically saying I'm not opposed to a trade, but I'm not going out of my way to request a trade as well. That was on January 21st. A lot happened on the 18th and 21st, 23rd of January. The Lakers finalized the deal to acquire Rao Hachimura from the Wizards for Kendrick Nunn and three second round picks. So this one was good for the Lakers. They got Hachimura. They traded away Kendrick Nunn. And three seconds. Seconds in the NBA, if you didn't know, they um, they don't really mean much. Team care about their first round pick. Second round picks kind of just go by the wayside. They're not that important. The first round is usually loaded. Those top 30, 35 players, everyone else kind of just falls off after that. Um, on the 24th, after the Lakers got Hachimura from the Wizards, um, said they were going to keep they're going to keep going. You know, they're looking to include 2027, 20, 2029 first round picks to complete the deal and they're going to do what they need to do to get some more talent. Um January 28th, the Pacers put trade rumors for Miles Turner to rest. They agreed to a 2-year, $60 million extension that included an additional 17.1 reno- re- renegotiation on his 2023 salary as well so also good for the Pacers good for Miles Turner keeping him there February 1st the Warriors said this year is going to be different Um, there's a lot less sellers this is according to Bob Myers they've talked to a lot of GMs what are they going to do they're like they don't even know I think we're good enough but we're 500 and 500 good enough right this year in the NBA like if you look at the NBA standings as of like today Today is Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th. I mean, you're looking at the top 10 seeds in the East. The Bulls are 10, 26 and 30. Wizards, 26, 29. The Hawks, 29, 28. Knicks, 31, 27. I mean, for the play-in, those, those are 500 teams. The teams that are right out of that, the Raptors, 26 and 31. Pacers, 25 and 30, 33. The Magic, 23 and 34. Only a few games out of that playoff. The Pistons and obviously the Hornets are very much out of it as they're 15 and 42, 15 and 43, respectively. And they're more than 10 games even out of the play-in. But a lot can ha- there's still a lot of basketball left to play. 
left to be played. Uh, then we look over at the West. The West is crazy competitive unless you're the Rockets, who are 13 and 43, and then the Spurs, who are 14 and 43, are very much out of the picture. But then you have the Lakers, who are 26 and 31, the Trailblazers, who are 27 and 29, and the Utah Jazz, who are 28 and 30, all two games out of the play-in tournament if the season ended today. And then you have the play-in tournament, which is looking like the Pelicans, the Timberwolves, the Warriors, and the Thunder. Who the Pelicans are 29 and 28, the Timberwolves are 30 and 29, the Warriors are 28 and 28, and the Oklahoma City Thunder are 27 and 28. Again, 500 teams. And then you have the top six who are all just minus the Nuggets, the Grizzlies, the Kings. You look at the Mavericks, 31 and 27, the Suns, 31 and 27, the Clippers, 31 and 28, just over that 500 mark. So 500 is very accurate for where teams at. They, they're good enough. Maybe a piece or two here, nothing crazy. There's not a lot of teams that are going to be making the decision that the season is lost. Hence, the benefit of the play-in tournament. Teams still want to play. They still want to keep trying to get in. So that was kind of said in the preface for the um, trade deadline. And then ahead of the trade deadline, the Raptors made a comment that OG on a newbie, they're gonna they're gonna listen, but they're not gonna they're not gonna ship him off unless he, they get a significant offer for him. And then Kyrie Irving, the drama started on the third of February. This was nuts. As Kyrie Irving requested a trade from the from the Nets. He opted in to his 36.5 million player option, of course. So he didn't hit free agency. Said, I'm not leaving KD. And Brooklyn was 31 and 20 and in fourth place in the Eastern when that happened. Kyrie Irving, he never shared a list of, you know, where he wanted to go. But the Lakers were front runners, really wanted to bring him in. They were even offering like a two-year 80 million. But Kyrie was looking for a four-year max offer. And then on NBA Today, a little bit later on February 3rd, um, Brian Windhorst said there's a very short list of teams that were on his radar. Mavericks, the Heat, and the Lakers. That's it. Those are the only teams that Irving would wave and say he would go to and accept the trade to. The Mavericks then started looking into it. Mark Cuban was like, hey, you know, let me make a call over there. And then Durant was kind of quiet. Durant wasn't really saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to take a trade. I'm, you know, I want out. He didn't really have to say it because he's kind of said it in the past. So it was speculation that if Irving's gone, Durant's gone, and Durant's under contract through the 2026 season. So that's interesting to note as well. And then the Clippers joined in on the Kyrie sweepstakes along with the Lakers, Mavericks, Suns on February 4th. On February 5th, the deadline started to pop off. We got the first big deal. The Nets traded for Kyrie Irving or traded away Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris to the Dallas Mavericks for Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, which is a reunion for Dinwiddie, a 2029 first-round pick, two seconds to the Nets in exchange for Irving. Then we jump over to the six, the trade between the Mavericks, or let's start at the morning. The Bulls did not intend to trade away anyone from their core players between Nikola Vucevic and Zach Levine, among others. The Nets Mavs trade went official, and then Philadelphia Sixers guard Furkan Korkmans did request a trade. He's 25. He played in 25 games a season, uh, which is he's on pace to play in his fewest games since his rookie season. Um, he's in the second year of a three-year, $15 million deal. He's only averaging 3.8 points per season. The Maver- the not the Mavericks, the Sixers are not making good use of Korkmans. Very talented, exciting player. Fast forward to the seventh. The seventh went crazy. The Utah Jazz were taking calls on Lori Markin and Walker Kessler and Achi Ochai Abaji. Um, none of those three got traded, thankfully, thus like the Jazz core. But teams are always taking calls, seeing what they can get, get there. The Nuggets were reported open to trading the 2021 first-round pick, Bones Highland. Uh, before Thursday tread deadline. However, Highland, who was selected as an NBA rising star on All-Star Weekend for the second consecutive season, he's averaging 12.1 points on 39.9% shooting, three assists, and two boards. So 
again, some teams, we're starting to see a trend, like the Jazz were taking calls on, you know, just some of these some of these younger players that they just acquired. Teams are more willing to split with their second-round picks from within the last couple of years, first-round picks, if the value's there to make them a stronger contender. Uh, a little bit later on the – what day are we on again? The 7th. The Heat traded away Dwayne Dedman and a 2028 20, second to the Spurs for cash considerations. That's a good move for the Spurs just to get something, someone to put some butts in the seats in the midst of the losing season. Um, you know, after Kyrie Irving deal went finalized, Durant and the Nets started talking a little bit more in depth, kind of saying what's happening. And then they had said they were not going to trade him ahead of Thursday's deadline. Um, the Warriors were expected to be quiet. Um, you know, they were trying to open up a roster spot for Anthony Lamb, who's currently on a two-way deal. Um, and he would be ineligible for the playoffs unless he was converted to a regular contract. The Brooklyn Nets are finalizing finalize a trade to send forward Kessler Edwards and Cash to the Kings. Uh, the Nets are going to save a total of $8 million in salary and luxury tax and open up a roster spot. Basically just trying to get get rid of them and open up that spot. And then Brian Windhorst also reported that the NBA teams might want to save his assets to go after Kevin Durant should he become available. And then the Nets on the, let's fast forward to the eighth day ahead. We're getting closer to the deadline. I'm just going through these headlines with you guys because it was an exciting trade deadline. And I was really excited. It was, it was nuts. It was nuts. It was so much fun. Um... The Nets continued to explore uh, Kevin Durant options. Uh, the Raptors were still listening to offers on Fred Van Fleet, on Anubi, and Gary Trent Jr. The Hawks were struggling to find a deal for John Collins, who's in the second year of a five-year, $125 million contract he signed in the summer of 2021. The Lakers were, were having little success moving Russell Westbrook and his massive contract up until the 3 p.m. deadline. Uh, the Utah Jazz and the Toronto Raptors are more up interested. Then, boom, we got another headline. The Lakers, Jazz, Timberwolves made a trade. The trade would send Minnesota's D'Angelo Russell and Malik Beasley to the Los Angeles Lakers. Mike Conley and picks to the Timberwolves. And Russell Westbrook and picks to the Jazz. The Jazz also were exploring options with Conley Jr. elsewhere. And then Jared Vanderbilt and Detroit's Bojan Bogdanovic were also players the Lakers were trying to acquire as well. Um, and then it's, then things kept happening, it's a little bit slower progression. The rumor became reality a little bit later as uh, they were just talking to everyone involved, it seemed, and trying to figure out exactly what and who and where everyone's going to go. And then uh, the Phoenix Suns governor, Matt Ishiba, you know, he got his role literally like a day before the trade deadline as the Suns departed with their previous um, governor. They brought in a new one. And then we saw, you know, him, him saying, you know, I want to make this team better. I'm not just going to be sitting here counting dollars. We're going to focus. We're going to make this team better. We're going to improve. We're going to compete. Then the Lakers finalized that deal to acquire D'Angelo Russell from the Timberwolves, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt. From the Utah Jazz, the Lakers sent Russell Westbrook and a lightly protected 2027 first to the Jazz, Mike Conley, and other picks to the Timberwolves. So it was very interesting, very interesting uh, that uh, D'Angelo Russell came back to the Lakers after he was the second overall pick in 2015, and he was traded away a season and a half later. The Knicks acquired Josh Hart from the Trailblazers in exchange for Cam Reddish, Ryan Art Diancono and Phi McCulliuk and a 2023 lottery protected first round pick that turns into four future second round picks if it's not conveyed this year. So it's either one or four. And Josh Hart is a very solid rotation piece. And then we get to the craziness that was February 9th, the trade deadline. So buckle up, it was a wild and crazy ride. Started early in the day at 12.37 Eastern time. The Raptors acquired Spurs center Jakob Pottle, or Pirtle, um, for Ken Burke and a 2024 first-round pick and two future seconds. And then we got news that it was close. It was very close. The Phoenix Suns were acquiring Kevin Durant at 1 a.m. Eastern time. 
according to Woj, the Suns are sending Mike Hill Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, four first round picks and a 2028 pick swap to the Nets for Durant and TJ Warren. Durant wanted wanted the move and new owner Matt Ishiba pushed to get the deal done tonight. So great job for Ishiba, you know, putting his money where his mouth is saying, hey, I'm not just going to say or count my dollars. I'm going to go get a star player. And he got Kevin Durant to team up with Booker and CP3. That Sun team is going to be good. And don't forget, DeAndre Ayton's also there as well. So really solid uh, starting group. The Brooklyn Nets were then trying to flip Jay Crowder, um, which teams love them some Jay Crowder. And Jay Crowder, he just they had too many wings, so they had to get rid of him. And then the Raptors continued to listen to talks on OG on Anubi and, you know, just kind of see where they were at, see what they could get. The Brooklyn Nets were talking to the Bucks about Jay Crowder, uh, trying to make a deal. And then we saw the Oklahoma City Thunder traded Mike Muscala to the Celtics. And um, just for depth, it looks like they probably just got cash, maybe a couple picks. Not 100% sure what the financials were there. Uh, he just provides some excellent depth between Horford and Williams III, both who do have injury history. Never hurts to have quality depth in the NBA. The Lakers traded, traded backup center Thomas Bryant to the Nuggets for Dave and Reed and three second-round picks. Bryant was averaging 12.1 points for the Lakers this season. He was very solid in that rotation role. And the Milwaukee Bucks acquired Jay Crowder from the Nets. And Crowder, who had not played at all this season while awaiting a new home, was traded to the to Brooklyn in the deal that sent Kevin Durant to the Phoenix Suns. So that one was kind of crazy because you think Crowder would want to stay now that KD was there. Maybe he just didn't like it. Maybe that just wasn't for him. Everyone has their opinion, kind of what they want, where they're happy. That just wasn't his place. Let's see here. So we got Jay Crowder. The Portland Trailblazers acquired 76ers Matthias Thibel, part of a three-way trade with the Hornets. The Sixers are getting Jalen McDaniels in the deal from Charlotte. The Blazers are routing Shvi McCulliuk to Charlotte. McCulliuk was acquired from the Knicks, as you just heard a couple minutes ago. The Indiana Pacers acquired Bucks guard George Hill and a second. Um, so homecoming for Hill going back to the Pacers, who spent five seasons there. The Hawks were still not able to move John Collins. They tried. They tried. Uh, the Nuggets did trade Bones Highland to the Clippers. Uh, not sure what the financials ended up being there. The Golden State Warriors did trade James Wiseman to the Pistons for Shatik Bay. Um, you know, in three seasons, he played just 60 games. A ton of injuries. So much potential just never worked out for him. Only can imagine if Wiseman never got hurt, very similar to Odom and just so many highly touted big men who got hurt right out of the gate. So hopefully it works out for him uh, to go to Detroit and uh, be a Piston and hopefully play in some more games. The Hawks traded Justin Holiday, Frank Kaminsky to the Rockets for Garrison Matthew and Bruno Fernando. The Hawks will also send the Rockets two second round picks as part of the deal. So lots of seconds moving around. The Clippers acquired Eric Gordon from the Rockets. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies are sending Danny Green to Houston in the deal, who was later bought out. And then the Clippers are sending Lucas Luke Kennard to the Grizz um, and three second round picks to the Clippers. The Orlando Magic traded big man Mo Bamba to the Lakers for guard Patrick Beverly. So they replaced that depth in Thomas Bryant with Mo Bamba, who I think is a better player. The Pistons are sending forward Kevin Knox II to the Golden State Warriors as part of the multi-team deal that brings them James Wiseman. Knox could also then be moved. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans are sending Devontae Graham and four seconds to the San Antonio Spurs for Josh Richardson. Very interesting there. Uh, the Hornets are trading traded Mason Plumlee to the Clippers for guard Reggie Jackson. And then this deal which we'll get to in a second. Let's finish up here. Uh, the Wizards are working on a contract. Well, they were working on a contract buyout with Will Barton. And then the craziest deal, the NBA deadline, that kind of finalized it all. And we'll, we'll end it here because this is still an ongoing situation. The Trailblazers are trading Gary Payton II to the, back to the Warriors uh, for five second-round picks. 
Uh, the Warriors are also routing Kevin Knox to Portland as part of the multi-team deal. And then Gary Payton failed his physical. If you pay attention to the NBA, you have seen this in recent headlines that he failed his physical. Crazy, right? Uh, apparently, he failed his physical due to the abdominal surgery he had over the summer, which held him out of the first 35 games. And apparently, the the training staff for the Blade Trailblazers was just giving him shots to play through the pain. They were forcing him to play through it. And this deal is still ongoing. It was reported today, I believe, that, let's see, um, that the Warriors are still trying to get this deal done. Um, they want to complete it. They want to bring him back, uh, complete this four-team deal. Pretty awesome. Uh, Danny Green got bought out of his contract with Houston. He's signing with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, yeah, um, let's see. I think there was an injury update on Zion. There's always an injury update on Zion Williamson. Another player who's just, if he's on the court, the Pels are an incredible team. Um, and he's apparently going to miss, he re, so this is the headline itself. Let me say Pelicans all-star, all-star Zion Williamson sidelined since January 2nd with a hamstring strain, re-aggravated the injury and is expected to miss additional weeks after the all-star break, which sucks for the Pelicans because boy, do they need him? I mean, the Pelicans are currently in seventh. I would imagine they would be a top six um, right up there with some of these teams. Uh, probably better than the Clippers if Zion has been on the floor. You know, the last 10 games are three and seven. They're definitely hurting without Zion. It's, it's rough because they do have a super talented team, but, man, you, you don't have Zion Williamson. Man, it's rough. It's rough. Granted, they do have a really good team in Jose Alvarado, Jackson Hayes is solid, Depp, Dyson Daniels, Willie Hernan Gomez, B.I., Brandon Ingram, who's just turned into an absolute beast in with the Pelicans, McCollum, Nance Jr., Josh Richardson, uh, who is very good as well. Just a really solid team, but just missing Zion Williamson, it's, it's rough. It's hard when you're missing your best player. And someone as talented and versatile that changes the game like Zion Williamson does. That's all on the NBA trade deadline that I got. Um, we covered the Super Bowl the trade deadline. Um, let's we'll get back and we'll talk some baseball to end it. And it's only right that we end talking about some baseball. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the World Baseball Classic and just some of the teams that are highlighting each pool of play and then a team from each pool that I'm most excited about that I think could be the Cinderella of that pool. Uh, we're going to start with Pool A, which consists of, uh, begins to play on March 8th in Taichung, Taiwan. You have Chinese Taipei, you have the Netherlands, you have Cuba, Italy, and Panama. Obviously, my favorite team out of this whole pool is going to be, um, gosh, it's got to be Cuba. It has to be Cuba, just, just how, you know, Cuba has won a medal in all five Olympic games in which baseball has been played. They're a sneaky favorite to go far in this tournament. I, I mean, I think they can win this pool with Luis Robert, Yon Moncada, um, you know, they have some really solid prospects. Tigers, Andy Ibanez, Royals, Ronald uh, Bolanos. Um, and just some also some other solid players from the NPB, which is Japan's professional league. Uh, Yuan Cespedes is also returning to the team um, and could add to his tournament record for triples. And then... Um, yeah, and then 36-year-old Alfredo Despiange, he's looking to increase his record of seven home runs. The team that I think could be a sneaky favorite in this pool is obviously going to be Team Italy. They have Hall of Fame manager, catcher, uh, Hall of Fame catcher as their manager, Mike Piazza. And then they have uh, former Brewers pitcher, Junior Guerrera. Um, and then you also have Italy... 
you know, they have Royal Slugger Vinny Pascatino, the Italian Nightmare, along with teammate Nicky Lopez, Cardinal starter Andre Palante, Angel Super Utility player David Fletcher, former Mets ace Mets Matt Harvey is also pitching in the World Baseball Classic, so Batman could be returning. Uh, Pool B, playing in Tokyo, Japan, playing on March 9th. The obvious favorite here, without a doubt, Team Japan. Um, Shohei Otani headlines it. Uh, two-way Shohei. Uh, it's one-man superhero team. Um, definitely going to make some noise and splashes this this uh, spring in the World Baseball Classic. He's joined by young starter Roki Sasaki. Um, nearly pitched back-to-back perfect games for the China Lotte Mariners last season. Uh, or Marines last season. There's also a collection of established big leaguers here. Uh, Cubs outfield Shaya Suzuki, Cardinals outfielder Lars Newball, Padres pitcher Yu Darvish, uh, plus new Red Sox outfielder Matsusaka Yoshida. And then you have the NPB MVP Manatea Murakami hit 56 home runs in Japan last season. Incredible. Um, man, he's a Solid player. Korea's good as well. Australia, China, the Czech Republic. Man, the one the one team that I think could make some noise in Pool B. Obviously, this is Japan's to lose, but I wouldn't count out uh, Australia. Um, unfortunately, they will not have Liam Hendricks, who is battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. Um, However, they are going to have Tigers right-hander Warwick Sapold and Angels outfielder Aaron Whitfield, a collection of minor leaguers as well, former big leaguers. I think they could be tough to beat. I think they're going to be good, not great, but good. Um, and then also in Pool B, you have the Czech Republic, China, Australia, and Korea. Korea is also going to give Japan a run for their money. Also a very, very good team as well. Uh, jump down to Pool C. This is the USA's to lose. I don't see another team competing with the likes of the USA here. Um, you know, this is one of the best World Baseball Classic teams, I think, in history, just talent-wise. And it's um, it's going to defend its crowd. It's going to defend its title. Uh, you have Mike Trout captaining the ship. Along with Mike Trout, you have MVP Paul Goldschmidt. You have defensive highlight reel Nolan Arenado, also an MVP finalist, uh, JT Real Muto, uh, Mookie Bet, Cedric Mullins, Mike Trout, Kyle Tucker in the outfield. Um, even then, <laughs> you go to the rotation, you have Cy Young winner, uh, Clayton Kershaw, uh, Lance Lynn, two-time All-Star, Adam Wainwright, who's just awesome, Nestor Cortez, Nasty Nestor, um, and just a solid team. Then J- Mexico is a very good team, headlined by Julio Urias, Colombia, uh, Canada, and Great Britain. Great Britain, watch out for Great Britain. I think they're going to make some noise. They ran through the qualifiers um, thanks to Harry Ford, Mariners' number one prospect, a.k.a. Harrison Ford. Uh, He had three home runs, eight ribbies during their sprint through the qualifiers. They also have Trace Thompson, who really took a step forward um, with the Dodgers last season. And then some other uh, young prospects who are very exciting and very talented, Lucius Fox, Deshaun Knowles. Um, the Los Angeles Angels, who I got to see play in the minors last season with the Dust Devils. He's a very, very talented player. Awesome outfielder. Can play some shortstop as well. Very, very talented. Uh, very fast as well. Whew, so fast. Uh, lastly, you have Paul D. Uh, plays in Miami starting on the 11th. You have Team Puerto Rico, Venezuela, the DR, Dominican Republic, Israel, and Nicaragua. This pool is the Dominican Republic's to lose. Um, I mean, they're... They have player manager Nelson Cruz. They're going to have Rafael Devers, Manny Machado, uh, J-Rod, uh, Elo Jimenez, Juan Soto, Vi Guerrero Jr., um, Cy Young Award winner Andy, Sandy Alcantara, uh, Christian Javier, uh, Pirate Fireballer Rosny Contreras, and veteran hurler John Cueto on the roster. Is theirs to lose. Uh, Puerto Rico is going to give them a great run for their money with Javi Baez, Frankie Lindor, uh, Yachty managing Jose Barrios and Marcus Stroman um, headlining their rotation. Venezuela is also going to be very good with Acuna headlining that. Altuve, Perez, and Cabrera also on the team who are playing in yet another World Baseball Classic, likely each of their last ones. Uh, Luis Sarayas, David Peralta, Anthony Santander also playing for Team Venezuela. Uh, Israel, you know, the Cinderella team from 2017. They, this is the deepest pool. They are the biggest underdog out of every pool 
here so far. Nicaragua was also very good. Um, but I'm going to give it back to Israel. I think that Jock Peterson is, did a really good job recruiting some talent. And yes, they might not be the best team on paper, but sometimes those best paper teams don't always pan out the best. So I think Team Israel could also make another upset and a case for themselves again and make some noise in Pool D. That's what I got in the World Baseball Classic. There hasn't been a ton going on in the baseball world, as we know. Um, it's, it's the offseason. World Baseball Classic is kind of dominating the headlines. Um, some things that happened. The Diamondbacks signed Andrew Chafin. The Marlins and Athletics swapped J.J. Belady. Blade from the Marlins for AJ Puck. So now the A's officially have nobody at all. The Dodgers signed Alex Reyes and David Peralta. The Cubs signed Christian Javier to a five-year extension, which is great. Um, the Cubs signed Michael Fulmer. The Blue Jays signed Bo Bichette to a three-year extension to avoid arbitration. And the Padres, this one is one I'm very intrigued about just because it's just so kind of bizarre. But the Padres gave you Darvish a six-year extension um, through 2028 as a full no-trade clause, and any Cy Young win in the contract first Cy season would boost his 2028 salary by $1 million. So it's incentive late in. This deal is going to pay him through his age 41 season. He's reported he's going to push it. He is going to play through this contract. He is going to be great. Um, he's been great since his Tommy John. He's been solid. Um, the Padres were set to lose both Darvish and Snell to free agency at the end of the season. Um, now they're going to keep at least Darvish. They're likely going to lose uh, Snell. They kept Joe Musgrove last summer. So now they have Darvish and Musgrove headlining the rotation. Um, you know, um, they're going to be having two relievers transition to full-time starters, Nick Martinez and Seth Lugo are both going to be making the switch to uh, starting options. Um, in the last couple of years, they've traded guys like Mackenzie Gore, Chris Paddock, Cal Quantrill, Luis Patino. So they have very little depth. Um, they have Ryan Weathers, Adrian Morjan, and Pedro Oliva pretty much in the system on the horizon, but not much else after that. So this team is definitely a win-down team over the next five years to continue to compete with the Dodgers. Um, in this division, I mean, you saw them sign Xander Bogart to that 11-year deal. They were in play for Judge and Trey Turner. They both offered them a ton of money. Uh, Fernando Tatis is a big deal. Manny Machado is playing on a big deal. Jake Cronenworth probably won't stay on this team through um, forever. They have Hassan Kim. Um, they just they have a very, very stacked team. They have a very good team. It's a very, very good team that's going to compete. Uh, Bob Melvin managing this team going into year two. Uh, very excited for that. I love Bob Melvin. I was a longtime fan of his in Oakland. And I think it's great. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a really good time in San Diego for San Diego fans. And um, if you saw the meme of kind of what the difference looks like in spending, I'm sure you can find it. But Fan Fest a few years ago, it's like 2019, it was empty. 2022, it was overflowing. It's an amazing turnaround. You know, they have Juan Soto still. It's just a great time to be a San Diego Padres fan. Uh, a diehard one, bandwagon fan, sure. Um, you know, the Royals re-signed Zach Greinke to a one-year deal. Hopefully that's a, you know, retirement contract. Uh, the Dodgers signed Miguel Rojas to a contract extension to keep him around after trading for him. The Mariners signed Dylan Moore to a three-year extension. Um, the Rays extended Yandy Diaz. Dexter Fowler announced his retirement, thankfully. Uh, the Mets signed Jeff McNeil to a to a four-year extension, which, great. But when are they going to pay Pete Alonzo? They need to pay Pete Alonzo. They're paying everybody else. Jeff McNeil, Brandon Nimmo, all these guys are signing these deals in New York. They're bringing in free agents left and right, you know, Carlos Correa. But yet, they still have yet to pay Pete Alonzo. You know, Verlander, $43 million. Ver Shirts are 43 million. Francisco Lindor, 31. Nimmo, 20. Marte, 20. Edwin Diaz, 21. Kodai Singa, 15. Jose Quintana, 13. Thomas New, 2.1. Um, all have 2024 20, salaries. Um, you know, they're already looking at 225 million guaranteed to 10 players with four club options coming up in Mark Canna, Eduardo Escobar, Brooks Riley, Darren Ruff. Two player options, Omar Narvaez and Adam Adovino. 
and nine player arbitration cases headed by, by P. Alonzo, all adding to the bill come 2024. They got to figure this stuff out. I mean, granted, Verlander could um, opt out. No, Scherzer could opt out. Um, you know, something could happen here. Who knows? I mean, Steve Cohen's got money to burn. He's burning it. I mean, it's what happens when you can. Um, making all these other owners look absolutely silly for not paying up to make get talent and to add talent to a team. Um, Buck Walter has the work cut out for him. If they don't win another 100 games and make the playoffs, man, I don't know. I don't know. But the Mets, on paper, look like an amazing team. It looks like a team set to run the NL East. And they were. And then the Braves figured it out and got it together. So... It's, it's a two-way race. It's either the – and then the Phillies can't count them out. They try and trade Turner. They got better. Um, I think it's great. I think it's good news for everybody involved. And who knows what's going to happen next. That NL East is going to be crazy between those three. Um, the Red Sox traded Matt Barnes for Richard Blear uh, to the Marlins. And those are all the recent headlines, uh, top stories over the last couple of weeks in the baseball universe. Um, and that's going to wrap us up. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much hockey, anything else, because I don't not well qualified to speak on that. But we really hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we're glad to be back here with Ball Boy Talk. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be a great time. Again, we're going to try to keep Ball Boy Talk ad free. Make sure you check out our other show, uh, Young Dad Podcast. That podcast is for parents, people in relationships, not in relationships, not parents, people becoming parents, people wanting to get into a relationship, people just wanting amazing life advice, educators. The social workers, hospital workers, frontline staff, air blue collar workers, white collar workers, everybody in between. You can't get enough of the Young Dead podcast. It is made for literally everyone, and we hope that it makes you laugh, makes you cry, help you, makes you sing in the shower. Listen to it on your drive to work. Listen to this podcast on your drive to work. Like, subscribe. If you haven't yet, go to YouTube, search both of these podcasts at Ball Boy Talk at Young Dad Pod. Subscribe to both of them. Hit the bell. Spotify. Go to both podcasts. Leave a five star. You're welcome. Hit the bell so you never miss an episode. Uh, Apple Podcasts, same thing. Five stars. Leave a review and um, all that fun stuff. On Spotify, on every episode that we post for both podcasts, there's a section where you can leave your questions or comments. I challenge you to do that. It's a lot of fun. It helps us engage with you guys. Um, as always, you can go to ballboyblog.com, ballboymedia.com. That takes you to the same place. Was recently revamped just for the re-release of this podcast. Very excited for that. Um, you can subscribe, join every uh, mailing list we have over there, leave comments on different blog pieces, um, and all that fun stuff. Again, really, really hope you like this podcast. We're super excited to bring it back to you. And we can't wait for all that 2023 has to bring us. Very excited for baseball season. Lots of baseball content planned out over the next few months. Um, a baseball road trip through the high A Northwest League for myself and for my daughters. Very excited for where that's going to take us. All the teams we're going to see. We're going to be seeing the Mariners, the Eugene Emeralds, Spokane Indians, the Hillborough Hops, the Everett Aqua Sox. Um, of course, Tri-City Dust Devils. We're going to be seeing some collegiate woodbat league, Walla Walla Sweet, Yakima Valley Pippins, uh, Dub C Fish Stick. We're going to see, um, uh, I think that's everyone we're seeing this year. Um, who knows if a team wants to say, hey, come see a game. I'm gonna, not going to say no. I'm going to come see your game. I love baseball. We love baseball. Uh, Jay and the girls take on the Northwest League. We take on baseball. A life goal of me and my girls is to see every single major league stadium that we can in the United States. And that's a goal. That's a dream that we are going to fulfill one day. Can't wait for it to experience that life with them. Um, again, five stars, wherever you're listening, we are on every single platform that you can think of. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Anchor, CastBox, Pocket Cast, iHeartRadio, Amazon, everywhere, Audible, everywhere you get your podcast, we're there. So make sure to follow, subscribe, stay along for the journey. Happy to be back with you and cannot wait for all that's yet to come.